Let's take a look at example two. So Simon, do you see how this guy is a piecewise defined function? It's a piecewise defined function because it's defined to be different on different pieces. So how do I use the definition to determine whether this is continuous? What I need to do is what I did this on the first thing, but I'm gonna make it more explicit. I need to check that the limit as X approaches three of F of X is equal to F of three. That's what the definition says. So that's what we need to check. Now, we're gonna have a quiz on Wednesday, the uh, second half of class. And um, um, when you see a piecewise defined function like this, I'm hoping that it's kind of automatic how you evaluate these types of limits. So I don't know if it's automatic yet, but if you happen to know when I see a piecewise, what's the technique that I use? I would love for you to tell me at this point or type in the chat box. So I have a piecewise defined function and I want to know what the limit is at one of the border points. It sounds like a border point at three. How would you evaluate a one-sided, I mean, a piece side, p, oh man, I think I just gave away the answer. How do you evaluate a piecewise defined like limit? Anyone remember? That's right, Audrey. You got to do two one-sided limits. You got to go from the left and you got to come from the right. So we're going to do that. So we're going to take the limit as X goes to three, oops, X goes to three from the negative side. And we got to calculate the limit as X goes to three from the positive side. Let me move it over a bit. And then we have to check whether that's the same thing as f of three, okay? So if I'm coming, if I'm approaching three from the negative side, is that gonna be the top function or the bottom function? Top. Bottom, why? Let me draw a little number line here. I think we said top. You think it's a top? So we're here at three, right? Like this. Do you see how this is X less than or equal to three? So we're talking about all the values to the left of three. That's gonna be defined with this function right here. So this will be a negative X squared plus four. But if you're on the right side of three, that's gonna be this four X minus eight. So this will be four X minus eight on this side. So I'm coming from the negative side of three. I'm coming from the left this way. So that's why I need this to be X squared plus four. Does that make sense, Reagan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. But then if I come from the right side, it should be four X minus eight. So we just gotta evaluate those two things. We gotta see if we get the same answer. So at this point, these are just polynomials, which means I can use the direct substitution property. So I use the direct substitution property and then that's gonna give me uh, three squared plus four. Uh, and that's gonna give me 13. Did I forget a negative? I forgot a negative, oops, negative, sorry. That's gonna give me negative nine plus four, which is negative five. Okay. I'm gonna use the direct substitution property on the right-hand side. So this is gonna be four times three minus eight. That's gonna be equal to four. So why in both situations- Sorry, why is it three negative? Uh, it's not, the three is negative. There's a negative in front of the X here. Oh, okay, okay. I just made a mistake, yeah. So this is, in both situations, I use the direct substitution property, direct substitution property. 
So what can you say about this limit? I come from the left, I get this. I come from the right, I get this. What can you say about this limit overall? Does not exist. Correct. So since these two guys are different, the um, limit as x approaches three of f of x does not exist. So once the left-hand side does not exist, there's no way it's going to equal to f of three because uh, this is just a single number. So we need both of these numbers to be equal. So Stephanie, there's a big difference between negative, there's a big difference between negative three squared and negative three squared. We mean this one because the negative is outside the squaring function. If you want the negative inside the squaring function, you have to put parentheses around it and then put negative X there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have one more question for you guys. Which type of discontinuity is this one? Number two, which type of discontinuity? Uh, jump. Correct. So this is, um, let me finish this off. So I should say this. So the function, so f of x is not continuous at x equal to three. So the answer is not continuous. And I'm gonna make a comment. I'm gonna say this is a jump discontinuity. So in fact, you actually can, can kind of graph this. If you come from one side, you're gonna get a like inverted looking parabola thing. If you come from the other side, you're going to get a line, and uh, and these guys have a jump in between their y values as you come from either direction. Yeah. Let's take a look at example three. Uh, what kind of function is this? Piecewise. Piecewise function is correct. As we know, whenever you have a piecewise function, you need to uh, come from the left and come from the right. I'm going to remind you. When we have piecewise, um, we need one sided limits. We need to calculate. two one-sided limits at the boundary and check they are the same. So what I mean by that is um, this guy breaks at zero. And this question is asking me whether it's continuous at zero. So this zero is what I call a boundary, a boundary value, because that's where the, the function can change. So if they ask you what's the limit as x goes to pi, that's fine. I just use this top function. I don't have to worry about the piecewise part. But if they ask me a limit that's right at that boundary value, well, then I got to do two one-sided limits. So that's really what I did at example two. This is the boundary, so I did two one-sided limits. So we're going to do that as well over here. Um, this result's going to be a little bit more interesting, I think. So we take the limit as x goes to zero from the negative side of sine x over x. Does anybody know what that's equal to? One. Sorry, that's equal to one. Who said that? Rocky, good. I should write one extra line. The limit as x goes to zero from the negative side of f of x. And then I substitute what's my f of x from the negative side, and then I get one. Next, I need to calculate what's the limit 
as x approaches zero from the positive side of f of x. That's equal to the limit as x goes to zero from the positive side of sine x over x. And this is equal to what? That's right, it's equal to one again. And for those of us that don't remember, wait, why is that equal to one again? Let me show you. So we had done this 1.5 worksheet and in example three, we had um, basically taken the limit from the left and saw it was going to one, take the limit from the right, saw it was going from one, oh, this limit is going to one. And we said this was important. It comes up over and over in this class. So that's how we got the one in case you're wondering, all right? So these two things tell us that the limit as X approaches zero of F of X is equal to one. What is my actual function value F of one equal to? Well, when I look at my piecewise defined function, when, I'm sorry, F of zero is equal to. Well, when you look at our piecewise defined function, when I plug in a zero for X, the output's supposed to be one. So in this case, the function value at zero is one. So when I take these two things combined, this means that the limit as X goes to zero of F of X is equal to F of zero. And this means F is continuous at X equal to zero. Okay. So um, these were just three examples. Uh, the first two were not continuous. The third one was continuous. Did anyone have any um, questions about these three examples for me? Okay. 